begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member, and you will get access to weekly Q&As and the exclusive Coffee Cast podcast, where we'll answer those questions. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. And begin we shall. Hello. Dante is already here. <clears throat> This is pretty interesting. I noticed the barbell and the weight look a little bit different from mine. That can be that can be correct because that bar in the thumbnail is from the top of my head probably an Eleiko, which is like a thousand uh, euro bar, which has been uh, IPF approved, International Power Lifting Federation approved. The Weights you see are calibrated plates, so they're officially weighed in, made of die cut. No, what are they made of? Uh, it's, it's, I believe it's steel something. I have calibrated plates here as well, but they're like officially weighed in, and you can take them in competition and know for 100% that that is the actual weight. Because when you go to a your average gym and you weigh in the plates, eh, you'll find that not every 45 pound plate actually weighs 45 pounds, things like that. <laughs> no, those are grown up weights. <laughs> you could look at it like that, Bull Rush. You could look at it like that. Oh, and the, um, the clips on there are two and a half kilos each. And I have no idea why they do that, actually. Because um, Maybe I do. The The normal clips you have in the gym, like those uh, plastic ones, actually weigh almost half a... Um, they almost weigh 500 grams. Half a kilo? Nah, that's not correct. I looked it up, by the way. They're like 0.300-something gram. And... So that's in total half a kilo. And that can uh, actually be a big difference in a lift. It can actually be a big difference in a lift. So that's why they use the official huge two and a half kilo locks on there. Plus, when you're squatting like 300 kilo, things like that, you don't want a small piece of plastic to stop the weight, to prevent the weight from falling. Don't want that. Oh, you can see the plates in my screen, by the way. I didn't even notice that. Notice that just now. But you can look at mine. There are the ATX ones. I'm really enjoying them. I'm glad I bought them. Although, would I have bought them again? No. And here's why. Not because of the weight or anything. They're, they're absolutely perfect. But they make so much noise. They make so much noise. It's like steel on steel. If you've seen my um, YouTube shorts, where I do squats and things like that, like the comments are full of them. Like, church is in session. The bell tolls for those who lift and things like that. So, yeah, that, that's pretty bloody annoying. I would have gone with bumper plates, mostly because bumper plates are all the same size and they don't make so much noise. It's like, ugh. Ah, Horden. Good to see you, Horden. Hordy Jordy. Jackie and Yappy. Good to see you guys. So how has everybody been? I haven't done a solo show in a while. What was the last one? Yeah, last Thursday was with John Fitch. Then we had Tuesday with uh, Paul from Apex Mindset, which was a good show, by the way. A very good show, in all honesty. That was one of the most relaxed shows I've ever done. So I'm I'm actually pretty happy with that. Paul's a great guy to hang out with. You get along fine with him. So that's nice. And what else? Oh yeah, I finally, finally released the where are you? Lazy Man's Guide to Six Pack Abs. Now, the only thing about that that is a joke is the title. The actual course, the actual video material in there, it's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. I have put all of my knowledge about how to get ripped in there. 
as in what you need to do, like not schedule wise and things like that. I might add one more module about fasting to go a bit more into the detail of fasting in their work camera. But overall, there's enough knowledge in there. The thing is, you just need to do it, which is people's biggest problem. And for those who haven't bought it yet, as soon as it came out, you're in trouble because I raised the price. I was like, why am I why am I cheaping my why am I cheating myself? Like the information in there is just golden. If you ever wondered why you're not ripped, here it is. Oh, I need to. There used to be. There we go. I had to put my phone on airplane mode. I saw the uh, internet. There we go. My screen that it was failing. But yeah, I finished this. It is now launched. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. And if you want my free course, the uh, exercise performance course, you can go ahead and get that one too. That one is free. Run to squat, bench, deadlift, things like that. So yeah. And marketing, I know. <laughs> Bull rush, that is considered fat shaming. And we we like to say... Um, we like to say eat we just like to say that they don't feel they don't feel uh thin <laughs> you need a truth mark warden seriously here it is i have that link here i am shilling everything right away by god man truth the mug here it is and no bull rush it's still too small for your large ogre hands now i'm ogre shaming Look, truth of the mug, it's right there. I, I need to drink more out of that one. It's like, it's my own merch. But this one just is so much nicer on the hands. Maybe I'll just write truth under this. I gave that raccoon a name once, but I completely forgot. But okay. Did the show with Paul, did the show with uh, John Fitch, which was an interesting show. I'm glad John had the time for me to do that. Because I have seen so many guys, they start lifting, but their confidence is still shit. It's like, okay, you look the part, but now you got to act it. <laughs> so I'll blast. <laughs> but now you got to act the part. And they still don't do it. It's like, yeah, I lift, blah, 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 I'm strong. Yeah, but you're still a pussy. Because just strong alone is not good enough. Like, I'm strong for my doing. But a friend of mine is way stronger. I need twice my strength, which really is pretty strong. But he's still hesitant. He's not assertive kind of thing. And lifting alone won't fix that. You want to be, you want to learn to be assertive. Go learn how to fight. And that's why I wanted to have John Fitch on to talk about that, to talk about that confidence booster and things like that. <laughs> but today, my dear friends, we are not talking about that. We are talking about killing the beta before it kills you. And you do that with not skipping leg day. One moment. Now, of course, the title is a bit clickbaity. Ale, that's the game. Learn to play it. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Uh -uh. Don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn to play the game. After that, you can complain. Which rhymes. Hey, look at that. Ian, for the five pound. Well, thank you, lad. What's up, Jack? Hope you're well. I'm doing great. Getting back to the gym after injury on full body workouts. Nice. Thoughts on three times versus four times per week. Oh, that's an interesting one. I can get into that real quick. Um, is it necessary? Is it necessary? That's what it depends on. Because, okay, if you're just a recreational lifter, which I think most of my audience is, you're not competitive power lifters, you're not competitive bodybuilders, whatever. Uh, the nice mid-range for volume when it comes to sets in a proper intensity which means a minimum of 65 percent of the one rep max is about 10 to 15 
that can easily be divided over three days. Heck, they're going to be even done over two days if you're if you don't mind long training sessions. Because that's the thing about three and four days. How long do you want your training sessions to be? Now, if you don't mind them a bit longer, go for three. If you like them a bit shorter, go for four. But it also depends on how many sets you want to do for a certain muscle group. That's what it really depends on. There is no be-all, end-all in this. This truly is time management. Now, in uh, professional powerlifting and even in bodybuilding and things like that, the um, max amount of sets, work sets, they do at uh, the peak phase of the schedule is 20. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't like dividing 20 sets of squats or, uh, well, yeah, variations of squats over three days. I would rather do four. So that's kind of how you have to look at that. When it's like, okay, how many days do I need to get my total amount of volume? Can it be done in three? And am I going to take a little bit longer? Can it be done in four? And can I do it a little bit shorter? Uh, I'd go for three, in all honesty, because the fourth day, you have to remember, you have to go to the gym and you have to come back from the gym as well. So if I were you, I'd put most of it in three. But if you're doing full body workouts, I don't know which one you're going to do, but just do Medis 5x5. Five five. In all honesty, just do strong lifts. That is perfect. Seriously, that schedule, even though it's based off um, starting strength, but without the clean and jerk, it's just perfect. It really is the best beginner's program out there. And if you want something different than that, go try Wendler's 531. It's also a very good program. Or you can get a schedule from me. Ale. <laughs> or if you want a form check by me, uh, you, have some, uh, you have some things you're worried about, you can always book me for a coaching right here. I know, shameless plug. There's so much plugging today. But yeah, uh, Ian, I hope that helps. I hope that helps. So it really depends on your time management. But as you mentioned, full body workouts. So that means you're training legs every day, which is good. Because you're a pussy if you don't. And here's why. First of all, the quadriceps, your legs in general, are the largest muscle group in your body. One of, if not the largest muscle group. So if you skip leg day, you are missing out on so much gains and so much ability to eat more. I have met so many guys who are very, very big in the upper body, but have skinny legs. Well, it's like, mate. Are you for real? Uh, I don't like leg day, man. Like I always feel bad after leg day. You wonder why? Seriously, do you want to know why you feel bad? At, you feel bad af after leg day? I will tell you right now. You know what? I'm going to let you guess for about a couple of seconds. How could it be that after upper body training, which you consistently do, you don't feel as sore as after leg day, which you consistently don't do? Hmm. Hmm, what is the common denominator here? I wonder, hmm, hmm, could it be the stance of the moon? No, no, that could not be it. Hmm, is it the flow of the water, the wind? Hmm, I don't know. Well, maybe because you barely do it. Huh, could it be? Yes, yes. Your legs are not used to the stress you put on them because you keep quitting. And because you keep quitting, you're a bitch. And you're going to feel like a bitch. But if you keep doing it consistently, your body will adapt. Maybe some of you have noticed this, but I haven't had muscle soreness in ages. Every now and then I get it, maybe after a deload, after a uh, two-week deload or whatever, then it kicks in. But like the training after that, it's already gone. 
training after that, nothing. And then I can just keep going for weeks on end with, without feeling any muscle soreness. I can't even remember the last time I had muscle ache in my chest. Seriously. But because you keep quitting your leg training and things like that, then when you finally do do it and it hurts, you're demotivated again is because you stop doing it. So the more you do it, the less hurtful it will be. Also, you're getting out of proportion and you're missing out on back gains as well. You are missing out on strengthening your lumbar spine. Do you know how much strength a spine needs for a proper squat well pretty much a hell of a lot like that weight is on your back and that needs strengthening but if you keep skipping it guess what your back is going to underdevelop <gasps> then you're going to be 60 year old with a broken back and ugly and i hear the crowd now what about ronnie coleman ronnie coleman ladies and gentlemen is a very 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 large exception to the norm that man is eight times mr olympia and he actually used to squat and he even squatted so many times and so dangerously that now he's paying the price so don't do that either but do keep consistently training legs please also leg day seriously if you know me and if you've watched my videos plenty of times full body over split schedule train legs every time you go to the gym and you won't have this problem either oh and start out with the legs since they are the largest muscle group if one of if not the largest muscle group and they um can be they they are the most intense is what i'm trying to say they are the most intense unless you do some uh, leg extensions with like 20 reps or whatever you can do those at the end Bingo. There we go. Mm. And another small detail, which I actually found out a while back. Girls like big legs. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. I had a, uh, I had a photo of me, of one of my earlier meets. Um, a meet is a powerlifting competition, by the way. One of my earlier powerlifting competitions where you could see my legs and the girl who I had a date with was like, Jesus Christ, like you keep seeing guys with big arms, but barely any guys with big legs. I was impressed. It's like, oh, well, good to know. And she was lying next to me and I flexed my legs. She's like, Jesus Christ. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> but chicks dig it when you're in proportion, sort of say. And when you're not some beta bitch, I know, I, I hate using the word as well, but it, is, it just makes everything so much easier. Who skips legs day, who skips leg day because he's a pussy. So don't do that. Any other reasons? No, not really. I went through them all. So just stop being a bitch and train your damn legs, people. Train your damn legs. You need them. Don't give me this. Uh, I skip leg day because don't go bro culture on me. This is not the place nor the time. Just train them. For God's sakes. Let's see. Uh, the chat. Cal Marlin, my personal trainer, amateur powerlifter buddy, never lets me skip leg day. I like this man already. I like him already. He also fucking loves back hyperextensions. I can imagine. I can imagine. In all honesty, I do them every now and then. And they do feel great. It's like, oh, yes, stretch the back. Like, come on. That does feel great. So I get why. Ronnie Coleman is a genetic outlier. He is. He is. He should never be brought up in normal in normie chat. No, no, absolutely. He should never be brought up in normie chat because not only was he on roids, I mean, in all honesty, eh, come on. 
he also, even without the roids, was a genetic freak. He really was a genetic freak beyond anything they had ever seen. And not even Arnold came close. And Arnold looked great. I do, however, want to point out, I'm not very much into bodybuilding and all that, but when Ronnie Coleman participated, that to me was just not easy on the eyes. Where it's like, ugh. Like Arnold, I, I'd look at Arnold and be like, you know what? I'd want to look like that. That would be okay. Like Ronnie Coleman is like, oh my god, like oh the 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 gut abs, like the 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 beach ball, whatever you want to call it, abdomen. It's like oh, oh dear. It's like a rice belly. You know what I mean? It's like uh That just didn't look great to me at all, and I'm like, wow. Is that when you have to become to win Mr. Olympia? Then I'm a bigger fan of the... Um, what is that called again? The um, the men's health competition? Ever seen that? The men's health competition? That's not even in Speedos, by the way. That is just in swimming trunks. Those guys, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'd love to participate in that when I'm 40. Come on. That is something of a goal of mine where I'm 40 and I can still compete in one of those shows. Because how many guys can say that when they're 40? I mean, how many guys can say it when they're 31? I'm almost, I'm not almost, sorry about that. <laughs> I was a bit confused with the time. It's like, no, it's only November. It's like, fuck off. Oh. It is, however, since Bullrush is in the chat, it is almost center class. And I might do a Sinterklaas show with you guys. But Sinterklaas just hasn't been the same in the Netherlands. It has not been. Jack, why? Well, because of politics and shit like that. Do you want me to go further into that? Or do you want me to talk more about training? Oh, wait, I can talk about training and the uh, COVID restrictions. So... Last week, I had a show with John Fitch about kickboxing and things like that. Uh, not just kickboxing, fighting in general. He's more of an MMA fighter. But I do kickboxing. Uh, now now I've only been doing it for a year, so no expectations. No expectations. But I do that with my dearest friend, Watson, who many of you know from the coffee cast. And now, in the Netherlands, they only allow you access in the gym with a QR code to show you are vaccinated in the gym. Let that sink in. Now, tonight, Watson and I are going to have kickboxing classes, but there is a high probability of Watson being excluded, and that might mean the end of kickboxing for us, at least in group training and actual uh, guidance with kickboxing because of the restrictions right now in the Netherlands. They have taken away one of, if not my favorite activities. Now, you could say, well, Jack, you could keep going. Because I could, because I got the vaccine. But it's not about that anymore. It's not about that anymore. You see, when, and you people know this, when I had COVID, when I got positively tested, three days, all three of them, all three of the days before I went testing, Watson and I were ill. But we were, we were sitting next to each other every one of those days. 20 minutes before I went to test, he was sitting next to me, both with uh, a runny nose and things like that, sore throat. I got tested. I tested positive. The day after that, he got tested, and he tested negative. So that's why Watson is like, you know what? I, I don't see the purpose of this, and I'm skeptical as well just because of that. 
Then the deal was I only needed one vaccine because I had COVID and I um I recovered from it. <laughs> recovered. Three days of headache. Who knew? But okay, I digress. That was supposed to be the deal. Fine. Now, ever since Watson was like, you know what? Uh, you had it. I sat next to you. I didn't have it. I don't see a reason to do it. I'm healthy myself. Except for a horrible smoking habit. But I'll leave that in the middle. <laughs> uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Now, they're saying, no, if you don't have a QR code, you are not allowed in the gym anymore. Now, they say you have a choice. I'm sorry, but that's not a choice. That's an ultimatum. Or say, yeah, you either get the vaccine and your uh, passport, something for which you, like, two weeks ago didn't even need. It's like two weeks ago, you could just walk into the gym, like, hey, good morning. Here's my uh, here's my membership card. No need for my uh, medical statement. Is now mandatory. Has now become non-accessible to un unvaccinated. So the probability is high that Watson will get denied access, which means I will be denied access, even though I got the vaccine. Because my dear viewers, I want to, I do want to, well, say this. If you decide with a good friend of yours, and in Watson's case, my best friend, stick with them. Stick with them. We, I mean, this entire space talks about honor and virtue and masculinity. That will be put to the test in these cases. In these cases, that will be put to the test. Where do you stand when they come for your loved ones? Where do you stand then? I honestly wonder. Because I've had associates of mine telling, well, he could get a test. It's like, seriously? Get a test every time you go to kickboxing? Every time you go to the gym? Oh, I'm negatively tested. <sighs> for a flu? For something that has a 99.98% chance of survival? Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's madness. But I do wonder, where do you stand? Where do you stand then? When they start excluding your friends from activities you enjoy, who you enjoyed participating in those activities with. Answer me that with your pro-masculinity. Hmm? I wonder. Because I had that conversation with Watson. He even told me, like, you don't need to quit. I'm like, you and I were in this together. If they exclude you, they're excluding me. I don't care. Just something to think about. Because that's how far all of this has gone. That's how far all of this has gone. <laughs> Pull your money and hire a private instructor. We might just do that. We might just do that. Uh, Kel Marlin for the $5 super chat. Thank you very much. He is a little five foot six. South, South Eastern Asian dude who can deadlift like 450. Damn. Damn. He loves talking shit about my weak hammies and hip muscles. Plus, he can get bitches. I am not surprised. I am not surprised. And also, and uh, this, is not, this is not a cope or anything. This is just something I've observed. I am not surprised he can deadlift that much with that height. I wonder how heavy he is because when you're shorter, you do have an advantage with deadlifting. That is just the way it is. Especially when you do sumo. Like when you're shorter, your hip flexors are just different and you can deadlift, you can sumo deadlift easier when you're shorter. I'm not saying it's a cheat. It's absolutely not because you still have to pull the damn weight. But when you have that, like that is just perfect genetics for deadlifting. Like, nice. And all the black pillars wept and cried out in agony. Like, seriously, you're short. Go deadlift. 
<laughs> go power lift. You're, you have an advantage. Like, I can't get the girl and the girls that love me because I'm five foot four. Wow, you're five foot four? You could kick ass in power lifting. Do it. Yeah, but that means I'm going to have to do the work. I know. I know. <laughs> Mad world. Or you can just buy my course. Lazy Man's Guide to Six-Pack Abs. Do that. Make something of your life. Just lift, bro. Well, yeah, just lift and learn to fight. Total cope. I know, Andrew. Total cope. You got me. You got me there. Total cope. Oh, pain. But I told you guys this story before, right? When I did the powerlifting meets, and in my weight class, everybody was like, yay high. Like, I was a half a head higher than everybody else. But in the 83 kilo class, those were more my height. And I have no idea how much I weigh right now. No idea. I just put my um, put my calories at like 3,100. And I stick to the diet. And I'll just see what happens. And holy shit, $10. My God, Cal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cal, for the $10 super chat. But Jack... Watson needs to stop being an unjabbable body. He needs to get our jab for the sake of our democracy. He needs to protect the jabbed colored LGBTQ bodies. <laughs> yes. Yes, he does. Filthy, unpenetrated. How dare he? <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember where that's from. <laughs> I know. But thank you very much, Cal, for the $10 super chat. I appreciate that. 170, 180 pounds. Okay, let me look this up. 180 LBS in kilo. That's heavier than I am. Isn't it? Jesus. That's about 80 kilos. Yes, that's heavier than I am. Um, and he's five foot six. Five foot six, five, six feet and centimeters oh yeah 170 oh yeah that's a chunky boy that is a chunky boy strong as fuck i am not surprised my friend i am not surprised <laughs> mm. i am 10 centimeters taller yet 10 kilos lighter 10 is it 10 yeah Seven and a half. Seven and a half. He has no gut, but he's very stout and has a huge back. The man is built like a kite. Yeah, I know I know the body type. A friend of mine has that as well. Friend of mine has that as well. Yore. He's uh, he's every he's in the chat every now and then. Yore. Built like a brick. Seriously, built like a fucking brick. Uh had has been doing judo for and he needs to correct me on this one, by the way. But I believe like 10, 15 years. I believe he got a brown belt. Habibi. Hello, Mish. T Rex Army. Habibi. No, but he like built like a brick. Like you said, like calves this thick. Like then chunk. It's one big chunk of mass. Broad back as well. But he's like, he's like yay big. Something like that. But he's strong. One of the strongest men I ever fought could not even beat him. And that's saying something. <laughs> hmm. Seriously, guys, everybody keeps talking about Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Ju do judo. In all honesty, do judo, man. That shit will, that will teach you. You're talking about me? Now we are. The monkey on the bat on the mic looks like he has a huge dong. Well, it's actually his paw. But thank you for that. He does have a tail as well, but we need to do it like this. Now he has a <laughs> now he has a weeder. Poor monkey. I'm sorry. There's a story behind this monkey, by the way. There's a neat little story. Might tell it one day. My buddy told me specifically to do judo. Yeah, because like judo is not just the ground. It is the ground and standing. The purpose of judo is get your opponent on the ground and get him in that lock. 
there's a uh, two throws I can still like I still know it was the elbow one. It's like oh, fuck. Do I still know this? You pull them. And I, whoop. And then you have the uh, the hip one. The mic is the don't. <laughs> ah, god damn it! <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> like it doesn't help that it's big and black, does it? <laughs> oh dear. BJJ and judo are hard on the joints. Oh, judo, yes, judo is hard on the joints because you have to learn how to fall as well. You have to learn how to fall, and that is, if you don't know how to fall, you are. Oh, you are definitely going to hurt yourself. By God, man. Mm. I was talking about that to my date yesterday. She does uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. She as well said, like, the, the grappling, what it does on your hands is just excruciating. It's just excruciating. But, I mean... If you want to have strong grip, if you want to have a good grip strength, I mean, go for it. He said that I can always cross train with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I have been working to save up from judo lessons. Nice. Yeah, I had to quit mine. Had to, wanted to, wanted to. Uh, I just didn't like it. The way it was taught. Like, the warm up was 30 minutes. Not even including judo skills, judo practices. And then we had like 10 minutes of a throw, and that was about it. But what broke the camel's back was that one of the earlier trainings, or I wasn't even there that long, it could be near the end, where it was like, okay, I want you all to stand in a circle and tell each other what you think about yourself. And I'm like, what? I don't even know these people. You want me to express my feelings about them? I'm here to learn how to throw them, not how to look at them and how to feel about them. Like, I want to know how I can choke them out, for God's sakes. Not what their positive attributes are. But apparently, <laughs> that's what he wanted to focus on. I'm like, oh, <laughs> girl does BJ and BJJ. Yeah, like, holy shit. Especially the first one. I was like, oh, hello. My God. <laughs> it's a story for another time. <laughs> Knowing boxing got me out of so much trouble. Yeah, man, learn to box. Like, boxing and judo are the two main uh, martial arts I would go to. Especially boxing. A proper boxing stand? Like, I've seen guys say, like, oh, I'm going to hit him in the face, blah, 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 and then they, they hit like this. Like, Ugh. Ugh. It's like, no. Whoop, bop, bop. You do it like that. You do it quick. You do it fast. You do it swift. And that wasn't even that great. But it's like, Ugh. they they don't even have their guard up. It's like, See, that's not how you do that. <laughs> but the funny thing is, when those guys, like, approach you and you get into that stance, all of a sudden, they're like, oh, shit, this guy knows what he's doing. Never mind. Never mind. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. And that is also something why I say learn to fight. It's like people won't bother you. The more capable you are of violence, the less violent people are with you. But you, you, you radiate that. You carry that with you. I've said it before. I've seen guys on the work floor where they just had something and I couldn't put my finger on it. They look like absolute dweebs. I'm telling you, they look like absolute dweebs. Bit chubby, bit geeky or something like that. Just slow. They look slow. like, Ugh. But they still had something that told me, like, don't fuck with them. Just don't. Don't. And uh, he was standing outside. The guy, like one of these guys, was standing outside. And I couldn't help but ask. I walked towards him like, you train martial arts? He's like, yeah, I've been doing kickboxing for 10 years. I'm like, ah, okay, there we go. <laughs> there we have it. I knew it. <laughs> you can just see it on them. 
you can just see it on them. No matter how geeky they look, you're like, eh, something about that guy. Something about that guy. It's it's like the fighter in the garden. No, soldier in the garden, gardener in the war thing. Be the first one. Be the first one. Be capable of violence, not violent. Which you learn by being capable of violence. My kickboxing instructor told me this as well. He's like, the amount of fights I have gone out of the way just because I knew I could have totally annihilated him are uncountable. Because it's not worth it. Just isn't worth it. Humans have the natural instinct for recognizing the capacity for violence. Nice. That's good to know. Let's see. It's like playing chess. You have to think ahead, yes. But issue with boxing is you won't be able to use your feet, only fists. And depending on which kind of boxing, but you should be good enough to drop someone with one to three punches max. In all honesty, most people will quit after one. Mish, I think you can relate to this. Most people will quit after one. Like they get the punch in the face. It's like, ah, this isn't this isn't how it's supposed to happen. No, no, it isn't. It hurts, doesn't it? Now continue. It's like, no, I don't want to. Well, you have to. But where was I with this entire story? Oh, yeah. He told me that, like, he, he went out every now and then. And, of course, some guy drinks too much. Some guy drinks too much. And he starts pushing him, like, hey, what are you looking at? And he's like, hey, mate, fine. I'll just go. Have fun. And seriously, my kickboxing instructor has fucking calluses on his knuckles. I'm not kidding. I saw that guy's hands. I'm like, dude, is that callus on your knuckles? I was like, dude. That guy could like seriously lay waste. And I mean, annihilate you. Very controlled in his uh, punches as well. I, of course, he has to demonstrate the movement. So we had back training and he demonstrated the movement. And even though his movement was slow and controlled, so weird this, slow and controlled, but the impact was enormous. It was so strange to witness that. Like, boom. So, whoa. Especially his kicks. When his punches even more. It's like so strange to witness, but also very motivating. It's truly a skill to be honed. To be capable of violence. But not violent. You'll just notice. People who are not capable of violence. Are very violent. Okay? Go look back at the show I did with uh, with John. Even Fitch says that. Power punches come from the shoulder. Not the knuckles. No, but the knuckles do have to like brace for impact. It's the knuckles who get the hardest blow. But I know what you mean. I know what you mean, Bull Rush. Uh, when it comes to martial arts, I like Carl's 7 to 10 philosophy. Which one is that? I think I missed that. Ah, morning, Green Leader. Lats are your friends in boxing is what I remember. Yes, yes, it is. So do your pull-ups, boys. Do your pull-ups. Oh, by the way, Dante, did you get the uh, doorstop pull-up bar? Or do, Oh, no, you're, uh, you're using the rack. You're using the rack. I forgot about that. I'm sorry I can't keep up with everything in the chat, by the way. Sorry I can't keep up with everything in the chat. It's getting busy. But uh, Cal, if you don't mind, what was Carl's 7 to 10 philosophy? Because I do not remember that one. And after that, I will be wrapping it up. Mish, artistic or autistic? <laughs> Just kidding, old blood. Just kidding, old blood. Let's see. Uh, I'm not doing it all at once. Eight to ten year plan. Good. Uh -huh. Oh, Jesus. Then boxing, then Muay Thai, then Krav Maga. Oh, God. Something like there is no need to be a 10 out of 10 on everything. You just need to be a 10. Yo, yeah. You don't have to outrun the bear. You just have to outrun your friend. And that is seriously it. That is seriously it. Um, 
funny thing, and I'll I'll end on this one, and after that I have a client. But okay, I had two day, dates this past week. Both of them, both of them, interesting. Um, one of the girls mentioned the whole uh, Tinder experience thing that most guys are just like. Let me backtrack a bit. One of them had in her bio looking for a guy to go to coupling couples counseling with just to see how long it takes the therapist to find out we don't know each other. And I hooked on that where it was like, okay, but we need a problem. And we had an entire back and forth about the problem and what we would tell the therapist and blah, blah, blah. And she told me later on, you were the only one who actually went with it. Like, what do you mean? Like, what do most guys tell you? Hey, cutie. Hey, you look beautiful. Hey. Things like that. You look, you look nice. Like, none of them even went for the bio where it's like, oh, okay. Well, that was easy. Power comes from quads too. This is why you should not skip leg day. What the entire show was about. But um, that just tells you, like, my game isn't that solid. In all honesty, my game is mostly just being, being, um, I don't know, not too serious about it. Like, I can, I can give or take. Uh, no, what's it? What's the one I'm looking for? What's the phrase? Take it or leave it. That's the one. I can take it or leave it. And I'm kind of a dick every now and then. But mostly because I just like banter. I'm a, I'm a very sarcastic asshole. Because I just enjoy it. I see the fun in it. Like, take it literally. Uh, sorry, take it seriously, not literally. And I really don't take it literally. I could take it or leave it. You want me? Fine. Laugh at my stupid jokes. That's all I ask. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. Like, what do I have to say? In all honesty, when she's into you, just do not step on your own dick. It's the only thing you have to do. Be witty, be smart, be whatever. Um, doing a show with Troy on Charisma tomorrow, by the way, because uh, Cat Academy is opening again. And... As you might have known through the uh, quarters of the year, I am an endorser of Cat Academy. Seriously, Troy stuff is just good. Troy stuff is good. And I'm not saying that just because I'm his narrator. I'm saying that because I truly, truly believe Troy's work is good. If you don't believe me, here are the audiobooks I narrated for Troy. That is a more actionable audiobook bundle, or if you want a more story-oriented um, audiobook, get Fifty Shades of Game by Troy. There's the plug. But what I noticed about that is just be just how do I phrase that? It's your competition truly is miserable. Abysmal. Your competition truly is abysmal. Learn to be a bit witty. Dare to be sarcastic. Learn. No. Don't be afraid to rock the boat. Is what I'm saying. And in all honesty, that's kind of my game. Just rock the boat. See how far it takes. Like, okay, when, when does this thing fall? <laughs> <laughs> and then you get a little bit of pushback, and then then it becomes fun. Like, oh, she's rocking the boat with me. Okay, this this is getting interesting. Now it's interesting. Other than, oh, you're so mean. Yes, I was being sarcastic. Of course I don't mean this. Do I have to explain this to you? Well, apparently I have to explain this to you. This is not working. Bye. That is my abysmal game. Just push some buttons. Have fun with it. But seriously, having in your bio looking for a guy to go to couplings to go to couples counseling with just to see how long it takes the therapist to find out we don't know each other. That's just funny. 
I find that funny. You should see the 40-year-old dudes around me. Very sad. Man, I have that 30-year-old dudes around me. I, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. I have a guy over who's 32 and is proud of his 39-year-old girlfriend. It's like, okay. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> Offering advisory to online dating. Mish, why not do it? I have seen your receipts in the Discord. It's like, holy shit. You should actually call it something Chad of Arabia like. 20 year old dudes around me. <laughs> I know Dante. All around us are familiar faces, worn out faces. It's absolutely horrible. But, mon frères, mon frères, I will leave you. I will leave you. Uh, first, some filthy little shilling. Horden asked for it. Truth the mug. You can get that here. Then, the Lazy Man's Guide to Six Pack Abs, which it sounds like a joke, but it isn't. There seriously is good advice in here. There seriously is good advice in here. I uh, I will be up, up front with it. I didn't put much effort into the filming of it, but I did put a lot of effort in the knowledge. A lot. And if you just follow it and listen to it and apply it, you will be fine. It's what I've been doing for years. And I've been, like that photo, I've been that like year round for five to six years. So there we go. For my narrations, my narrations. Approach like Chad and Text Game Mastery. The Fifty Shades of Game audiobooks, the trilogy, all three books. These two are audiobooks I did for Troy Francis. And of course, the Gendernomics audiobook bundle. Oh, and the last but not least, if you want to have a form consultation, so where I judge your form and performance of said exercises, you can go here. I've already had a couple with you guys. I'm very much enjoying them. If you're interested in that, you can go there. That was it. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below what your thoughts were of this show. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a member and get access to the exclusive Coffee Cast podcast where we will have weekly Q&As. Thank you for all the super chats. I really appreciate them. Ian, Cal, and then I miss any. I don't want to miss any. Ian, Cal. That was one more. Uh, this one is Ian's. Cal. I really appreciate those. Look, Dante can vouch for me. I had a great consultation with Dante. Really helped. And I just really enjoy it. So leave the like, support the channel. Thank you guys for everything. And I will see you on Friday night, Saturday morning, depending on where you live, on Red Evening. Tot scenes.